you know, somebody else approaches a problem, and so it's like a different way, a different perspective. And I'd say Keith and I are probably as different as two engineers can be in the way that we think, in the way we approach things. I mean, sometimes he talks and I'm like, what the heck is he saying? Anyway, so, um, so it's going to be different, I think. I don't know, you can tell me afterward. Um, so I, don't, I didn't want to do the PowerPoints. And also, I noticed that in all of his problems, right now you're working on um, Thevenin equivalent circuits. They're all circuits that only have independent sources. Have you done a circuit with a dependent source? Yeah, and I said that to him, he goes, oh, well, those aren't very common. I'm like, yeah, but they're so much more fun. So, and, and plus they are a little bit harder. So I thought I would do a problem with a dependent source. And it also involves using um, node voltage analysis, so, so you'll get a review of that. All right, so here's the problem. Can, you, can everybody see this? Um, I don't even remember where I got this problem, but um, anyway. We've got this circuit here. It's got an independent voltage source. And let me give you a quiz. What's the definition of an independent voltage source? Anybody know? How about an ideal? Let's start with ideal voltage source. OK, so I, I make my students really know these definitions. An ideal voltage source delivers the voltage that it says it's going to deliver regardless of the current through it. Okay, that's the definition of the ideal voltage source. Similarly, an ideal current source delivers the current that it says it's delivering regardless of the voltage across it. Okay. In addition to the voltage here being independent of the current across it, it's also independent of anything else. Okay, so that's what an independent ideal voltage source is. And then, of course, an independent ideal current source would be independent not only of the voltage across it, but any voltage or current in the circuit, as opposed to a dependent source. Okay, so right now, this is a dependent, and we know it's dependent because it's this little tri uh, diamond symbol, and it's a dependent current source. It's also ideal. Dependent sources are ideal sources. So this is going to deliver the current that it says it's going to deliver, which in this case is 10IX, so it depends on this current here. And it's going to deliver it regardless of the voltage across it. Okay, and then additionally, since it's a dependent source, it will depend on some other current or voltage in the circuit. So in this case, it depends on IX. So, um, this particular dependent source is a current controlled current source. But you could also have a voltage controlled current source, and then you could have a current controlled voltage source and a voltage, so there's those four. All right, so this problem is, is asking us to find the maximum power to the load. Okay, so you, you've got something connected to this circuit. In this case, it's just a load resistor, RL. And we, they want us to find the maximum power delivered to the load, did I miss the, the word deliver? I suppose you don't really need it, but I think it makes it more clear. If the maximum power transfer condition is met. Okay, so that's the problem. So, you know, if you're gonna do this in the standard format of professional engineering solutions, you would say, okay, this is the given, this circuit, and then this is what you're being asked to find specifically, the maximum power delivered to the load if the maximum power transfer condition is met. And then you want to label your solution. Okay, so who knows what that condition is? And the Thevenin what? resistance is equal to the load resistance. Okay, so the maximum power transfer condition is met when the Thevenin resistance is equal to the load resistance. So maximum power <laughs> So say that, okay? So I make my students explain their, you know, really make it clear what is going on. So you would actually have to add some text, not just numbers and formulas in your solutions. So maximum power, and I, I, I would suspect Keith would appreciate that too, is delivered when OK, 
and you are assuming that the person reading it does know something and they would know that that stands for the seven in resistance. Okay, so we're looking for the seven in resistance. Well, okay, so what, what is the seven in resistance? Well, it's the resistance in the seven in circuit. Who can tell me in 25 words or less what seven in theorem says? What is seven in theorem? Anybody want to go on camera and get famous and tell us? Yeah, want to volunteer? Okay, you're too shy. Get over it. Okay, I'll tell you. The evidence theorem says that if you have a linear circuit, it's got to be linear, and you're looking at it from some perspective, so in this case I'm going to label these nodes A and B. So I'm looking at it from the nodes A and B. Thevenin says that we can replace all this, and it could be a mess, it could be much more complicated than this. As long as, and it can have a lot of dependent sources. As long as it's linear, you can replace it with a resistor in a series with a voltage source. And so, we can replace this complicated circuit with this circuit. This is called the seven in resistance. I noticed that Keith calls this the seven in voltage, and he uses capitals. I don't like to use capitals because that implies that it's constant, which in this case it is, but it's not always, so I usually use lowercase case b. So I'm going to use a little bit of a different notation because I think it's, I think it's what the book uses. OC, what does OC stand for? Open circuit. Open circuit. And the reason it stands for open, open circuit is because that's how we're going to calculate it, is we're going to look back at the original circuit, open it up at the terminals that we're looking at it from, and calculate the voltage there. So it's called the open circuit voltage. So Thevenin says that we can replace all of this stuff that we're looking at from the perspective of terminals A and B with a simpler circuit like this. And then the maximum power theorem says that once we calculate RTH, that's the value RL has to be to get the maximum power. All right, so we're looking for the Thevenin equivalent circuit. All right, so how do we get, how do we get this, how do we get RTH. Well, in the problems that you've done with only independent sources, you just killed all the sources. I hate that terminology, right? Because it's so violent, but that's how they say it, right? You kill the sources, and then you just get the equivalent resistor the resistance from what is left, right? Well, you can't do that when you've got a dependent source. So you, there's another way to do it. The Thevenin resistance is equal to this Thevenin voltage, which I'm calling the open circuit voltage, over something called the short circuit current. So obviously we need to figure out what VOC is and what ISC in order to get the Thevenin resistance for a circuit that also has a dependent source. Okay, well, I, th I think you've done the VOC part, right? Because I think you've had to do that for some of the problems that he showed me that he's done for you. So to get VOC, okay, so just to make this like a nice readable solution, so I'm saying maximum power is delivered when RTH is equal to RL, and I know that this is the Thevenin equivalent circuit to this thing. And RTH, I know, in the Thevenin equivalent circuit for a circuit that has a dependent source is VOC over ISC. So now we have to find VOC. How are we going to do it? Anyone have any ideas? Um, I'm going to go back to this original picture. Okay, like really, ideally, I should redraw it so that I can.
just have it right there on the solution, but in the interest of time and laziness, I'm just going to say to find VOC, um, uh, C figure one, okay, so now I'm going to label this figure one, and I'm going to change figure one slightly. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this voltage here between the terminals. Oops, I lost my B. A and B. So, so that's my problem now. It's just the problem from chapter four, right? Where you're just asked to find the voltage somewhere in a circuit. So, you know, there's basically three methods that we've taught you, right? There's superposition, no voltage analysis or mesh current analysis. Those are basically the options that you have. Anybody have a favorite one? Well, I do. I'm going to do no voltage. <laughs> so I'm going to say to find VOC, see figure one, and use uh, node voltage analysis. So node voltage analysis consists of, I, I break it down, five steps. And in fact, I have a little, what do you call it, a mnemonic to remember it. Do like the super Kaufman, but you could say Keith, so it works. <laughs> so um, do actually stands for draw. You, you need to draw the circuit and clearly draw it, labeling all of the elements. Then. Since I'm doing node voltage analysis, this L that stands for label means label all the node voltages. If I was doing mesh current analysis, then I would have to label all the mesh currents. So the steps are pretty much the same for node voltage or mesh current analysis, but it's the dual. You know what I mean by dual? When you have a dual circuit, okay, let's cut for a second. 